Hey guys, welcome back to Friends and Enemas. I'm here with my new friend, Kristen. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kristen Silva. I'm a therapist in uh, the state of California. I've been doing that for about six years. I've only been licensed though since um, April of this year. So it's a bit of a process. Start as a therapist actually in grad school seeing clients. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then after graduating grad school, you have to still continue to get about 3,000 hours. Uh, not act, not a little. It is 3,000 hours. Like, that's certain, kind of a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Um, and certain like specialty hours. And then after that, then you can apply to the state to take your um, licensing exam. And so, uh, and the state's a little behind on that. So it took four months for them to give me the okay. Wow. Yeah. And then, yeah, took my test back in April and been licensed since then. Wow. Okay. So I didn't know that you guys had that long of a time for yeah. kind of like clinical, mm-hmm. it's similar to like what we have to do in a sense. But, um, yeah. and then we have to wait to be told, okay, it's time to take your NCLEX. So kind of yeah. like you guys. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You have to take um, an exam when you graduate um, and you have to pass that in order to graduate. And then, yeah, you have to gain a certain amount of hours and then um, take an, another exam and licensing exam. And then even before that, like one year after grad school, you have to take a law and ethics exam. So there's just like multiple exams that you kind of have to take. But oh, wow. after licensure, you just have to re-up it after that. So. Okay, kind of like us, like continuing education. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so what made you want to become a therapist? Um, so growing up, um, even from, from birth, uh, I came out feet first, I was breached. Um, oh, okay. and so back then in 1993, they, I'm, I'm guessing they didn't know that, Hey, you got to flip the baby. Uh, and so the doctor <laughs> yeah. just pulled me out with my legs and, um, my, mom, my arm was in my mom's pelvic bone. And so it completely tore my, my nerves on my arm. And, um, you know, growing up in a very Catholic household, like we didn't talk about mental health. It was very under the rug. Um, I was in out of hospitals probably until about like seven years old. Oh, um, wow. Personally, I do not like hospitals. Yeah. Uh, I don't really blame you, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, like my anxiety goes up the roof. But just growing up constantly in and out of hospitals, uh, I just had a lot of anxiety. Uh, my parents just didn't really like try and get me help for that. It was just swept under the rug. Uh, I had one parent that, I mean, has their own anxiety and that would turn to anger and eventually mine turned to anger and I'm just like, I'm just gonna do what I want and that obviously didn't end well. Um, and then my other parent was just very insecure and they had passed their insecurities on to me and so a lot of it was, um, oh, in the case, like, let's say I had an issue with them. Um, go like, hey, you know what, like, I'm really upset because this, this, this. It was always turned to, you know, Kristen, I was always afraid how people were going to treat you and how it was going to be when you were dating and constantly just this whole thing. And in my head, I'm like, dude, I, I brought up that I was upset with you. This, how did we get here? Yeah. How did it get turned on me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so the message I always got was just like, you need to prove your worth. Like you constantly need to, um, show people that, you know, you're worthy to have in their life. And I ended up becoming a people pleaser. Yeah. Um, and I say I'm a recovering people pleaser. Like at the end of the day, I have a lot more boundaries and better communication and stuff. Um, but it definitely was was something difficult to go through. And, you know, one of my therapists, like years ago, I was like, you know, Kristen, at the end of the day, you were the black sheep. Um, because I constantly would just like push things of like, hey, this isn't okay. Um, and like you'll push a, boundaries. Like, or like, not boundaries, you'll push like the, the idea that telling you, you pretty much need to earn whatever they're trying yeah. to get that like, that's not okay. Yeah. Hey, this isn't, this isn't okay. And being that I just didn't go with the flow, especially with my parent that was insecure. Um, it really rubbed them wrong. I didn't have bullies growing up in school. My bully was at home. Damn. Yeah. I can relate to that. I feel like a lot of people are going to relate to this episode with you because that's very common. Most definitely. Um, And it was hard. It was hard growing up in the case of like, you know, hearing that parent gossip to their friends, talking complete like trash about me. And so I remember one time I I wrote to that parent a letter. It was literally two pages, single space. And, um, and, you know, I slid it under their door and I was like, hey, you know, I'm just giving them time to like process it. Cause I was like, at the end of the day, he's just going to get turned back to my arm. And I remember the other parent that has anxiety and anger coming out. Cause I was like, you know, I'm just going to go chill in the car, uh, coming out, opening the door, throwing me out of the car and was about to beat the crap out of me. And I was just like, I said, Aww. and I just remember yelling, like, did you read the letter? And they said, no. And I was like, if you read the letter and you come back and you still think I need my ass kicked, then so be it. Like I will, <sighs> I will take the L. Yeah. Um, and so that parent came back and they apologized. But with all this, again, just goes back to in the case of just feeling like, hey, I had to prove my worth. Because even in the case of that, like, you automatically assumed that I said all these horrible things and that I, like, just didn't have my back or didn't Mm -hmm. even take into consideration. You just come out angry and 
like had no care in the world like the neighbors could have seen i mean back then i don't think my neighbors would have said anything but right, still right um and so in college i was like you know what i have to like i have to put myself first because at the end of the day um you know my parents didn't give me therapy and you know so be it uh but i was like you know what as an adult like it's my responsibility to fix these patterns because like i just noticed not liking myself i noticed in the case of like constantly putting other people before me and then also like when i would set a boundary and they wouldn't like it and they're like wow kristen you're being rude or wow kristen you're not a good friend like you're not doing this for so and so and it's just like you know what i need to do this for myself Mm -hmm. and so um i did community college in bakersfield and then i had moved up to chico state and so i ended up going to therapy did therapy throughout that did therapy during grad school um, and on and off now do therapy just for myself in the case of like just different life things and so um it just really all of it kind of just pushed me to like become a therapist you know the things that happened to you as a kid like it's not your fault and being able to as an adult like hey you get to you get to change your story you get to um to rewrite your story and to tell like the different chapters in your life. And I feel like it'd be extremely empowering. And I feel, um, you know, going through my own therapy, I feel like I, I get it in the case of having to be in that very vulnerable seat because it is like as a client is extremely vulnerable. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) And I totally feel that. (laughs) Yeah. And so, um, you know, something I believe, and I mean, this is just my tidbit is that like as therapists, like if you haven't done your own therapy, um, in a way, I feel like you're kind of doing a disservice to your clients because you're not willing to dive into your own stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I was just like, you know, what? at the end of the day, I like this is what I'm doing for myself. And even now, like there's times, whether it be in the case of my own personal life, it's usually in the case of my own personal life, but being triggered by some of the things that like clients say. And I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, if I need to go back to therapy, then I'll go back to therapy kind of thing. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's really cool that you say like if you are being a therapist and you're not putting yourself in a client's shoes you're doing a disservice because i think a lot of people at least i get messages every every time i talk about my childhood as well which we have some similarities Mm -hmm. um i get messages like well i didn't have childhood trauma so i don't think i need to go to therapy like but pain is relative pain is so relative it doesn't mean someone had to punch you spin on you throw you out of a car do any of these things physical or like mentally harming things to feel rejection at some point in your life or to feel like you didn't matter at some point mm-hmm. it didn't have to come from your parents yeah so i feel like you're right on that like therapists should be going to therapy mm-hmm. for something and yeah. it also shows you how to be vulnerable and like sit in the shoes of your client yeah because it's hard yeah it's super hard and that's something i tell my clients especially in the beginning like so one of them are guarded and i'm like i totally get it yeah like at the end of the day i'm a complete stranger even though i'm a therapist i am a complete stranger and so just being able to um, a lot of times during the beginning, I'll just provide what's called psychoeducation. Like, hey, here's some education on the symptoms you may be experiencing. And I feel like oftentimes it helps them just be able to be like, wow, like, like um, being able to kind of connect the dots. Because yeah. oftentimes they're like, I'm the only one that experiences. I'm just alone. Um, when in reality, it's like, like, no, like these are symptoms that are very common when it comes to like this certain diagnosis or yeah. and stuff like that. And so, and like cool. you said, like providing education shows them that someone's done studies on this. So yeah. like, you're not alone. You can't be the only one going through it. Clearly there's enough funding to go yes. <laughs> to like do a study on it, you know? Yeah. So I feel like that's really cool. I've thought about, um, like when people are like, well, if you didn't want to be a nurse, what would you be? And me now I'm like, I won't, I'm not going to go back to school yeah. at this point. I just, I don't want to, but I'm like, you know, a therapist would be really cool Mm -hmm. but going back to something you said um sometimes your clients might say something that triggers you i think about that with my own therapist i'm like i wonder how much because you guys are are taking in all of the you know hard stuff and then you're like pouring back into them something something refreshing or good or how to get past it or how to heal from it and i always think about my therapist too how often after therapy sessions with your clients are, are you like damn that, that was hard <laughs> so i feel like the stuff that like triggers me is more in the case so um i do prior practice but also right now i mean i did put my like uh, resignation in recently but oh. i work for community mental health and community mental health i work with clients that are at the poverty line around the poverty line they suffer from severe mental health um and it's kind of a spectrum some of them they're a little more functioning compared to others mm-hmm. um but you know the clients that i get that are experiencing schizophrenia or in their very deep down bipolar like down syndrome like symptoms in the case of whether it be uh, being really depressed or even just um experiencing like manic behavior yeah yeah um 
there are sometimes like in the case of like Kristen, you're so stupid. Oh no! <laughs> or um, a, like and at the end of the day, I'm like, it's not in the case of like, hey, what they said was triggering. It's more in the case of imposter syndrome and mm-hmm. just like, hey, yeah. you know what? Did I do like something that not necessarily wrong, but I'm like, can I be helping my client better? Or just in my own personal life of like, hey, you know what? Am I in some areas? Am I incompetent? And I know that I'm not. But yeah. in reality, it's like, hey, you know what? Why is this? like thought sticking with me and so at the end of the day like I've worked with a therapist working on like inner child and like negative um like negative cognition so negative like core beliefs Mm. and that definitely helped a lot um but yeah I've had I've had clients you know say you know you're stupid or recently one that was like Kristen your therapy is elementary and I'm college level and (laughs) okay (laughs) and at at the end of the day it has nothing to do with me it has nothing to do with me as a therapist it's like at like and in general and we'll go into haters like at the end of the day has nothing to do with you it has to do in the case with their life and when you really look at like their circle of like hey is other areas in their life being impacted and usually the answer is yes because at the end of the day again it's not it's not about you it's not about the case of that that statement well and also like having imposter syndrome like you are from what you said a newer therapist and i feel that way as a newer nurse as well in in cases where i get a patient that i'm not familiar Mm -hmm. with what they're going through i get the same exact feelings Mm -hmm. where i'm like i might need to talk to somebody who's been here longer than me or who knows something specifically about this diagnosis because it does it can make you feel a little out of your depth i guess yeah but doesn't mean you're doing something wrong yeah because like exactly. that's just how you learn and yeah. that's how you're going to build a rapport with someone too exactly but calling you stupid is completely not okay <laughs> yeah it's like you're not stupid and you made it this far like mm, that's probably not the best word but <laughs> exactly and again it is going back like it has nothing to do with me and like knowing that and um and in general like when it comes to any like schizophrenia diagnosis like i always like talk to my supervisors and my colleagues. I'm like, that's just not my bread and butter. Like, right. uh, like one of my colleagues is like, you know, Kristen, that's just like, that's just the area you get stretched. And I'm like, like, yeah, like anything is great in the case, of, like being able to learn different things. And at the same time, sometimes it's unpredictable in the case of what you're going to get. Are you going to get um, the person that's like willing to talk to you? Or are you going to get the person that thinks that, you know, you're their horrible relative and, and you're trying to steal their money. Yeah. 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 So, That's difficult to work with, but I like, I find it really cool that this is your career path too. Mm. And like, you can openly talk about it and talk about the ins and outs of it and like what, what is so difficult. Cause it's interesting how there are similarities Mm -hmm. with nursing as well. And that's why I wanted to bring other career options on, on the podcast, because we all deal with something kind of, especially when we're dealing with the general public, Yes, we all kind of have a lot of similarities as, as a as to how we feel about ourselves Mm -hmm. in the moment, like imposter syndrome and feeling like "Mm, maybe this isn't for me or maybe this is for me, but like, I I don't know how to get further in it. Um, I want to jump back a little bit to the breech baby, your Mm -hmm. right arm nerve damage um, from being yanked out. That's what I have on my notes. So um, can you tell us how that's impacted your life, whether physically, mentally, and how you've got to where you are today because of it? Yeah, um, it definitely has impacted my life. I mean, I think... I just had to adapt a lot. Like physically, I had to adapt a lot. When we play like video games, I'm like, you know what? I will find a way. Yeah. Like, and I did. I will beat you. Yeah, and I did. Yeah, and I'm like, I will beat you. And I came to like games, like when it came, like came to like swimming, I'm like, I will figure out how to swim fast just with one arm and like my legs. Like I'm gonna do it. Um, in the case also growing up, like especially because I like I like I like to work out. Like honestly, that is like my go to in the case of like decompressing. And um, I remember like some trainers being like, "Hey, Kristen, like you can't do you can't do arm workouts. You can't do this because at the end of the day, I'm like, they would they tell me like it's gonna mess up your back. And that was completely right. Like I would have to go to physical therapy because like my back would hurt a lot. And I just kind of felt defeated by it. I'm like, okay, like at the end of the day, I can always find like an option. But that one I kind of like got stumped on. And so mm-hmm. actually back in December, um, an influencer that I follow, her name's Shireen. Um, she has her own. So she's a doctor of physical therapy as well as. Uh, personal trainer oh nice yeah and so in December she had posted that she was taking clients and I was like I was like you know what maybe this is the fit that I need like maybe in the case of like overcoming this because I'm like I just like I want to continue to to push myself and so she actually she helped a lot like I worked with her for five months and um she helped me trying to find like different um like exercises to be able to do and if it was pushing me too much we'd change it and I feel like that helped a lot physically and as well it brought up a lot of stuff emotionally at times I kind of felt like it was um, overwhelming just because of the fact I'm like, okay, in the case of trying to find, um, I guess like options around it, a lot of it in the case of like 
my own like thoughts of like, oh, this just isn't going to work or like, oh, there's obstacles in the way um, that popped up. She was amazing in the case of helping me work through that. Um, and besides that, I'm trying to think of another thing that I feel like it just came down to like at the end of the day, just finding different options. Yeah. And if if it didn't fully work, it worked enough. I think the only thing I haven't necessarily conquered in the case of trying to do is curl my hair. But I'm like, one day, like, I remember <laughs> hey. one time I tried and I burned myself and I was in high school and people were like, Kristen, is that a hickey? And I'm like, hickeys don't, they don't get crusty. You're like, like thanks. No. <laughs> Let's use your common sense here. Yeah. No, but. I mean, with two arms, I still burn myself. So yeah. I can only imagine. Um, you said something earlier that kind of stuck out. It was, um, what's happened to you in your past is not your fault, but it is your responsibility yeah. to like... It, in terms of like therapy mm -hmm. but maybe that's within all of our life like yes. what's happened to you from being born from your past from things you could never um control mm -hmm. it's not your fault by Correct. any means but it is your responsibility to pull yourself out yeah and I feel like you did that yeah like look at you yeah and I feel like and I I feel like I had to go one way it came to my arm as well as just in the case of like holding like resentment towards my parents and stuff. Yeah. Um, just having to go the process of like, I have to let it go. Like at the end of the day, I can't go back. I can't change those things. One of my colleagues, he's like, he refers in the case of drinking the poison and she's like, Kristen, you're drinking the poison. I'm like, as much as it hurts, like I have to let it go and I have to build acceptance. And even I feel like that helped in the case of like last year, I sat down with one of my parents and I was very honest. I was like, you know, I like you cause you're my parent, but I don't love you. Oh yeah. Um, and I feel that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, telling that parent and I mean, it really hurt them. And I'm like, okay, like at the end of the day, I don't treat the people I love like the way you, you treated me mm -hmm. and even treated me in the case of that year. And, and I feel like since then, like we're at a better place, but at the end of the day, like I'll never be like super close to either of my parents. And, um, but in the case, again, taking that responsibility, and I feel like, especially when it came to that, being able to let things go, being able to let go in the case of, like, my hurt that that parent caused in the case of emotionally, especially when it came to how I viewed my arm and, like, how I viewed in the case of how I'd approve my worth as yeah. well as other things. And um, just in general, like, I, I'm, like, I'm at the point, I'm, like, you know what, like, again, I've learned, I've adapted. Um, I can continue to, like, push in, like, be greater in different areas of my life. And that's yeah. what I just tend to focus on. Honestly, that's really um, resonates with me, too, because I... I don't have the best relationship with my parents. I mean, one of them I don't even speak to. Yeah. And the other one, it's very surface level. Mm -hmm. And that used to bother me so bad. Like, I see other friends with their parents, like, mm -hmm. and their best friends. I'm like, why was I robbed of that situation? Yeah. But finding community, as weird as it sounds, where we can relate on mommy and daddy issues mm -hmm. <laughs> together. Yeah. Because you're right. Like, you kind of have to accept it is what it is and also you can't force them to change Correct. you cannot be so codependent and the fact of thinking like well you'll change them you'll mm -hmm. save them because they're gonna do what they want to do Correct. they've been doing it for how long yeah. like my parents are in their 60s and i'm like yeah and most likely the things i tell them they're not gonna change but mm -hmm. i can accept that they are the way they are and for me a surface level conversation i'm like you know okay yeah <laughs> that's all i can do it's either that or nothing so yeah. I feel you on like having hard conversations with your parents is really difficult. Mm -hmm. Re how would you tell someone to kind of navigate that part? Cause I've actually not, yeah. the things I want to say to my parents, I've not said yet yeah. and they're in my head, but how would you tell someone yeah. to do that? Um, I think first, and this is what I did is honestly, I role played with someone that I like that I, I cared about and also that would give me like feedback. Yeah. Um, so even the case, like how I said earlier, like, you know, I like you, but I don't love you. Something that I actually changed when I did tell my parents, like, I like you and I don't love you because the and really changes it. Like both things can coexist. Mm. When you say, but it really takes off the whole first thing um, and just focuses on the second part. And so in the case of role playing with, with, um, in the case of friend of like, Hey, does it sound okay? Okay. As well as like, what moments could I potentially get triggered mm. and try not to go back to in the case of whether it be like matching my parents energy in the case like they are very passive aggressive and also not in the case of just shutting down because i'm like you know what i just really don't like this yeah um and so really just standing my ground and during that even that during that conversation after i said that my parents like well i already know what your decision is and i'm like well help me understand because um <laughs> yeah because I, I gave you two options i gave in the case that hey things can change and we can try and have a relationship or at the end of the day like i will be cordial and that's it um and I think a big thing is just kind of like going slow within the conversation, not necessarily getting so caught up in like the 
every word that the other person's saying and also just sticking true to your boundaries and true in the case of like what message are you wanting to get across and also just choosing you like, yeah they made they made changes and again i will never be super close to them and i appreciate that they made changes um and all at the same time i'm like i i don't like put this at the same time i don't feel like we'll truly get to the place we need to be until they also like work on all their stuff Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day all that stuff is still there it's just in the case of being able to kind of like like change it or um reserve it in the case of not like it not being around me because i know hey if that comes out like i'm dipping like i'm I'm not i'm not putting up with it yeah and you you did set your your tone your boundaries Mm -hmm. like this is what i'm needing from this and if you want to be in my life you're gonna have to adapt to it um i think something with with my experience as well is excuse me um telling my mom certain boundaries Mm -hmm. that I need and and not saying like this is a boundary but me just saying something and it is a boundary and her saying you know you used to be so sweet what happened Mm -hmm. and I'm like that you that that used to really mess with me because I was like I'm still a sweet person what what's going on my therapist was like no that is a form of like manipulation and she might not even know it it might not even be her trying to be that way but it's a form of manipulation that's saying oh your boundaries over here i don't like them. i don't like them so i'm gonna say that you're being mean and really you used to be so sweet and really i used to be able to be walked all over yeah and i just found that so interesting like how many people deal with that yeah the people that get upset that you're setting boundaries are the exact people that you need to be setting boundaries with and when you set those boundaries they're gonna get upset they're gonna throw in the case of you know you used to be so sweet and it's just like i'm still a sweet person Mm -hmm. and I'm, like, and. I'm I'm picking myself like yes. I'm picking myself and I'm setting in the case of what's okay and what's not okay and it is you know your choice if you want to abide by that or not and I think a big thing with boundaries it's at the end of the day the person that's setting the boundaries it's your responsibility to maintain them meaning mm-hmm. that like someone can totally try and cross over um, your boundaries and it's your responsibility being like like hey I already set that boundary like you crossed it like it's 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 done done yeah Yeah, they're going to try and push it and i mean you can give them chances of like hey you know what like remember but if they're continuing to do it, it's like hey they know that at the end of the day they can get away with it whether oh, yeah. they know it's intentional or unintentional just like oh well this person will come around they're just they're just having a day they're having a week like it's right. whatever and it's like no like, it's like i day, was serious yes <laughs> everything i said was serious yes <laughs> No, that's that's really good advice. You did mention that you grew up in a um, Catholic household. Yeah. I grew up in a very Christian mm-hmm. household. And while um, I'm not shitting on anyone's religion, mm-hmm. I do think it's okay to be a part of a, relig- a religion if you feel healthy mm-hmm. in that. I did not, just mm-hmm. based on how I was raised. Do you mind walking us through a little bit of what that looked like? Yeah. And maybe with, um, does it have anything to do with your mental health at the time? Yeah. So again, like my parents very much through mental health under the rug um oh it was very common in the case of like you know you don't need to cry there's no reason to cry um just pray to god you need to go to church i remember one time i don't remember what had happened beforehand but i remember one time when my parent katie gave me like a book that was it wasn't like it wasn't the bible but it was some type of book in the case of religion they're like this is gonna fix you and again, I had a lot of anxiety that turned into anger, and I just didn't care at this moment. I ripped the book. I threw it at them. <laughs> I Clo- kind of like it. <laughs> yeah. I closed the door, and it was at the time my parents allowed us to have locks, and like locks that like we had our own keys, like not in the case you stick the little thing in oh. and turn it. Yeah. Um, but I remember closing the door and locking it. I remember, I remember my door just warping as my parent banged on the door and told me if I don't open the door, they're going to take the door off. And I told myself, okay, Kristen, you have three options. You can either go out the window, which I lived in a, it was, my room was in a two story, but if you walked outside the window, it had the like outdoor patio kind of like cover type mm. deal. And it was pretty sturdy. And I was like, I can jump on the trampoline and take off. <laughs> the trampoline is yes. crazy. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm terrified of heights. And I was yeah. like, at the end of the day, even if I do that, uh, I'm still I'm still gonna get hit. And You're still gonna come back to this. Yes. Yeah. Um, and my parents like, if you don't take the door, like, if you don't open the door, I'm taking the door off. And I was like, okay, if they take the door off, I'm still gonna get hit. And so I just remember being like, you know what, Kristen, you just gotta take it. And I remember Aww. opening the door and just taking, like, getting hit. At the end of the day, again, it was just very much of like, you know, you go to church, you um, like, you pray to God. Things were just very swept under the rug. And in general, like, in the case of. Um, even in the case of how that parent, like how they were raised, like there was a lot of stuff that happened. And again, it just got swept under the rug. And, um, and even like to this day, especially when it comes to like one of my parents, they're still very religious. And it's just like, um, 
I feel like if it doesn't align with the religion, then it it um, it can't be right. Correct. It can't be right. Mm-hmm. It's wrong. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm like, that's just to me, that's just not okay. And just it's very growing, black and white for them. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very much black and white. And so growing up with that, it definitely, it definitely was hard, um, especially because I know, like you've talked about, like in the case of like you know, in the home there was a lot of things going on but when you left the home like there was a certain image that like the Mm -hmm. family kept up and it very much was the case of like hey you know we're just a loving family and things are great and dandy when in reality like even the case of like my parents growing up i'm like they just seem like a like a loveless marriage like they just seem like they they just coexist and i'm just like but at the end of the day the thing that they stayed the the reason they stayed together so long just like oh it's because of our religion like we have to stay together um and it just to me and again like you said like if people are religious that's totally okay um that is completely okay i think another big thing is just like in the case of religion it's very much of like god's first and personally in my life i'm first like i love that and and the reason for that and it's not in a conceding way but but more in the case of like at the end of the day i wake up to me Mm -hmm. i go to sleep with me if i'm not prioritizing myself if i'm not taking care of myself if i'm not speaking up for myself then i'm not going to be living my authentic life i'm not going to be true to myself and if and when i'm not doing that then i'm like and i've known from the past i'm like it's just i don't want that for my life Mm -hmm. i love that that you said that though because um growing up i felt the same way Mm -hmm. as well and it also left me with a lot of anxiety my anxiety also was anger and Mm -hmm. i only just realized that until you said my anxiety that showed us anger i was like oh that was me as a kid like i would throw shit and like get angry because that's what i witnessed as well um when you're saying like you're putting yourself first i know something i felt a lot of um what's the word kind of like shame maybe or just i was not sure how to come about this in my adult life was questioning things Mm -hmm. and asking why but why is it this way and why is it that way and that was always a no-no like Mm -hmm. how dare you question these rules like this is what we said and it it just is what it is and that never computed with me growing up I wanted to ask why I was Mm -hmm. one of those kids and as an adult now I'm like if you have that gut feeling of why you should figure out the reason Mm -hmm. yeah chase down the why because I'm not saying you have to go away from your religion or what you believe but there can be toxicity in Mm -hmm. religion especially growing up in a household like we have Mm -hmm. that puts it above their children yeah and it's like who it's so hard for me to understand where my parents were coming from but like you said maybe the way they were raised has also affected them but once again they've not taken the responsibility to to figure out what was going on with them or why they're so angry or anxious or whatever Mm -hmm. feeling they're thinking other than happy it's strange watching them go through that when we have i feel Mm -hmm. like we speak a different language Mm -hmm. now that we've been through therapy oh yeah and i'm like watching them is like it's hard yeah because i'm like i want to fix you but i can't Can't, i can't it's not my job i think at the end of the day when it comes to therapy you build a self-awareness in the case Mm -hmm. of like your patterns within life and also how it's impacted you and being able to change that um i know in the case for me like it's kind of surprising like in the case my one of my parents like they fully like supported me through uh, my undergrad like they paid for it and i'm very thankful for that yeah um and then thankfully in the case of like grants as well as just being able to pay like i was able to pay for my grad school yeah um but it kind of surprises me because you know as a therapist and uh, growing up in the case that mental health mental health doesn't exist it's yeah. nothing <laughs> like um, whoa it's like my whole life <laughs> yes it's very um it's very interesting i remember even the case of grad school and my parents being like oh you can you can practice diagnosing on me and as a therapist, I do not. I don't diagnose. Uh, I do not diagnose my friends or my parents or anyone. I'm like, then today ain't paying me. I'm not gonna yeah. assess you. Um, but it kind of just made me chuckle inside because I'm just like, even then, I'm like, you you have no awareness in the case of like your mental health, the case of things that you've gone through. I remember even one time calling my parent out, and they're like, it's just how I am. It's just how I am, and I'm just like okay i even remember telling them i'm like and at the end of the day you have the choice of whether you want to change it or not and you're telling me right now you don't i have to come to terms with that yeah i remember them just getting mad and getting up and storming off and i'm just like okay did they do the whole like i'm so sorry i was a bad yes whatever i was a bad parent and i'm like yes sit down and they're like (laughs) i did the best i can i have two siblings and uh i remember in the case one of them like she she seemed just very anxious and stuff and my one parent just being like well, I don't know why Shelby has to act that way. And I'm just like, okay, and how do you want to approach this as an adult? Like trying to like, 
like hey you have an opportunity to change things and Mm -hmm. even then it was just like at that time it was just like okay she's just gonna have to go through the same thing in a way um different but at the same time in a way because at the end of the day a parent was so focused on well how is it affecting me and all this stuff and it's just like it's not always about you yeah actually the world doesn't revolve around you yeah and also like your children grow up to be adults they're still always your children but they are adults and I feel like there's been a disconnect with me personally with my family who's seen me as a child their whole life but now I'm an adult and sometimes Mm -hmm. I'm like I'm not getting the respect of an adult Mm -hmm. I'm getting the respect of like you still think I'm a child I am your child but I am a grown adult making my own decisions paying my taxes like I'm doing all the adult things but I'm not getting that respect Mm -hmm. and I feel like if for me like that aspect would have to change for my relationship to go Mm -hmm. deeper yeah um do what type of therapy do you do outside of a community uh so in private practice i see clients that have anxiety depression um trauma in the case of self-esteem um phase of life type stuff in the case of like so i work with some like adolescents usually in the case of like teenagers Mm. um and then in the case of like young adults as well just in general like adults um I use a bunch of different like different types of interventions that really kind of gear towards the clients but i think at the end of the day my big thing is just focusing on like empathy um giving validation gently challenging my clients because at the end of the day it's like hey there's these different patterns that you're doing um and it's not my it's not my job to like tell you what you should do but rather like hey do you notice that you're doing x y or z um a big thing i also focus on focus on is in the case of compassion because at the end of the day we can be so hard on hard on ourselves and a lot of times Mm -hmm. i have clients that like they'll be hard on themselves during the therapy session i'm like did you notice that like you've said multiple times of like oh why did i do this or like why am i like why am i being so dumb and so like we take a moment and i ask them like you know how what would it look like if you gave yourself compassion? And oftentimes it's like, well, I don't know. And so usually I'll go to in the case of like, if you had a friend that came to you and told you all these different things that was going on in their life, what would you tell them? And oftentimes like there's, you know, kind things that the person would tell them. And it's like, okay, what would it look like if you told yourself that? Oh, um, I'm getting a little emotional thinking about okay. it. That's so true. Yeah. Um, and then starting from there and at the end of the day, working towards just automatically giving yourself compassion because um, in the case of, especially going back to, like for me, like in the case of hearing, like, you know what, you constantly have to prove your worth. Mm -hmm. And that definitely kicked in the case of like perfectionism and being super hard on myself. And so a big thing in the case of compassion, it's like, you know what, I don't have to also be a person that beats myself down. Yeah, I don't have to be like in the like in the case of my parents that would more than likely I can imagine unintentionally, but beat me down the case of like, putting my worth at a different level. And so it's like, you know what, I don't have to add to that. I can yeah. give myself compassion. I can treat myself kindly. Um, and it, I mean, it definitely, it took time. Yeah, absolutely. It does take time. I think that's one thing people get really scared about therapy because well, one, it's like dating. Yeah. That's what I say. You're dating your therapist. Mm-hmm. If you guys don't mesh within the first couple sessions, I would say like, get a new therapist, get a new therapist. I've had three and it was third times charm. Thank God. Mm-hmm. But cause I was like this close to being like, that's it. I don't yeah. want to do this ever again, but I don't, I don't want to like preach that type of mentality. Cause I yeah. think it is a dating yeah. s- scene almost. And not everyone mesh as well yeah and i think a big thing um and there's also been research on it is that if there's not a good therapeutic relationship you're not going to benefit and the Mm. reason for that is because if if even it doesn't care what interventions a therapist throws it could be really good interventions but it does not matter if there is not a good relationship because um if there's not a good therapeutic relationship you're more likely not going to be vulnerable you're more likely going to be a bit guarded you're more likely not going to take the feedback or like do any type of like homework related Mm -hmm. to therapy outside of therapy and at the end of the day if you're seeing your therapist once a week that's less than one percent of your entire week yeah and if if you bank on that i'm like if you bank on it you're not going to see any difference because 99 percent of it is outside and like outside of therapy and what you do outside of therapy in the case of utilizing your tools that's where you're going to see the most progress Mm -hmm. damn spitting facts over here i was (laughs) like yeah actually that's what i went through that's what i went through yeah that's so funny um so we're kind of moving on to haters yes so i i wanted to do this topic mostly because i have a lot of friends Mm -hmm. everyone can get hate and we know that but i see it a lot when people put themselves online Mm -hmm. and out on social media their thoughts their opinions whatever creativity it doesn't really matter what the post may be there will be a hater in the comments and oftentimes a lot of them Mm -hmm. what do you think about that or is there any like is there any 
psychi- psychiatric like th- tell me what you think from okay. your point of view yeah. as a therapist yeah <laughs> okay. i think the more views you get the more followers you have the more opportunities you're going to get haters and the reason for that is because when you think about it outside of social social media the group that you have around you more than likely, I mean, if you have people that are not like positive for you, eventually, I mean, if you're working on yourself, you push them out. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what? They're not beneficial. The thing with social media, especially if you put yourself out there as an influencer, unless you individually go block these people at the end of the day, they can go make new profiles. Like every time. Yeah. (laughs) It's like a waste of time sometimes. (laughs) And so at the end of the day, like people all around the world have access to you and they have access in the case of putting their thoughts in. And um, oftentimes people, or not often, I feel like the majority of the people who are haters, they have their own self-esteem issues and also a lot of them they want that power control and so it's like you know what if I can put my comment out there and even if Lindsay replies back I don't have to reply back to her or I can you know start stuff and and the thing is haters will find haters like at the end of the day just as much as like positive people positive people will find positive people haters will find haters and that gives them fuel Mm -hmm. and I feel like when it comes to haters there's kind of like a couple different haters I feel like there's the haters that will publicly put their face out there and bash other people and um because they want they want the attention they want that social validation yeah. um and then when things change in the case of people being critical of them they're like oh my gosh you guys are so mean <laughs> <laughs> every time i'm like wait didn't you start this <laughs> yeah <laughs> because at the end of the day then that validation's going away uh i feel like also there's a people that they will you know have no picture on their profile and not even a name it's like user five four three two one kind yeah, of thing. like it's yeah. just some random thing and they'll just bash you i feel like nine out of ten times people who write hate comments it's not in the case of like hey you know what i don't i don't also agree with this let's have a conversation it's like no i'm going to say this because this is my opinion and my opinion is is concrete and you're not going to change it like <laughs> yeah. it's just very in my eyes i think i feel like it's very close-minded it's mm-hmm. very close-minded of like it's my way or the highway it's not in the case of you know what this is my opinion you have a different opinion both of them can coexist in the same room it's like no my opinion is 100 percent, and what you're doing is absolutely ridiculous right and it's just like no like both can both can coexist and i think people can really take it like way overboard in the case of like even going to the point of doxing so like posting Mm -hmm. people's like personal information online that's always crazy to me i'm like you feel that good about what you just did yeah crazy yeah and it's just it's it's very um it goes going back to like it goes very much back to in the case of how they feel about themselves because even if you think like and they're more likely in their circle of people they Mm -hmm. probably do the same thing in the case of like very close-minded not being open-minded to other people's opinions very much of like oh it's my way or the highway yeah i feel like um when people take it as far as doxing yeah someone i'm like okay there are very few reasons that someone should be doc or not docs is docs and canceled the same thing doxing is someone's personal information so doxing is in the case of posting someone's personal information okay. so i remember I when like um Avery woods came on your podcast yes. so that would be in the case of doxing posting which is wild yeah posting personal information um and really putting it out there as a way of it's to be malicious it's yeah. not in the case of like oh hey like this person, i know where like, you live yeah. no no it's <laughs> in the case of being malicious absolutely and i'm like her you know and she's one of many that this has happened to yeah. but her children live there how yeah. on earth could you ever put minors in danger like that is beyond me so i guess what i was going to say is cancel culture is also rampant rampant it's (laughs) everywhere and don't get me wrong when it first started i'm like okay you know some people maybe it's so hard for me to to say what i really like i don't even know what i really think on it because now i'm in the space of putting myself out there and it's hard watching people come after people for things they've done way back when versus who are they now right. have they if they're the same person now i'll you know i'll so be it wipe my hands of it like i i get it mm-hmm. but most of the time they're not yeah, and i'm like changed. what if they moved out of that environment went to therapy they changed they they literally are supporting themselves mm-hmm. now versus like being a child yeah. i don't know i go back to that because i'm like whoa if you met me 10 years ago a lot of you guys would fucking hate me because yeah. i hated me yeah same. so i'm like what are we gonna get to a point where we understand that people grow yeah. from their environment situation etc Oh yeah, I definitely get that. I feel like people hold influencers and as well as like celebrities to the status of like you have to be perfect. Like yeah. you can't mess up and and just being very critical and I feel like when it comes to social media just overusing words. So in the case of canceling or in the case of gaslighting, like 
in the case of having a difficult conversation with someone mm-hmm. doesn't mean that automatically oh you're gaslighting me like, right no. or in the case of canceling just because someone did something a long time ago and they're a different person today doesn't mean that like oh we should just cancel and, like yeah. i feel like it gets so much in the case of like hey let's start this I wouldn't say movement, but in the case of like, hey, let's start in this case of like canceling this person and then other people want to join in and then it just kind of grows and it grows and it's just like you're, you're painting this picture of this person based off who they were before rather than who they are today and I feel like it kind of just does a disservice. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like in general also like I see in the case on like um, TikTok in the case of like Chris Olsen and the people like being really like hateful towards him regarding like his you know personal pictures getting exposed and he didn't do that but mm-hmm. yet in the case of people just putting him down and just like bashing him and it's just like yeah. at the end of the day again holding people to this sense of like you have to be you have to be perfect you yeah can't, you can't have anything wrong and you should have been perfect before i knew you yeah. you should have been perfect before you got here like all yeah. this stuff i'm like why are we not it's weird because i feel like on the at the same time that's happening a different side of tiktok is like talking about self-care correct. and growth and what we should do and i'm like those can coincide correct it's and not but yes <laughs> like you it said is and and but, yes exactly <laughs> and they go and they're going to coincide just like yeah. in the case of haters you're going to get haters but also you're going to get people that are super positive or just like um yeah they're super positive or they're just interactive and in not in a way in the case of you know being rude or, or anything like that and mm-hmm. so uh, I don't think that haters are ever going to go away yeah. unless social media goes away. But even then, in the case of people's personal life, there's always going to be haters. Yeah, there's always going to be someone. I feel like until you, it used to really bother me, the comments I would get, even though they'd be 99% love, yeah. there'd be that 1% hate. And that would really sit with me at night. I couldn't sleep until I started really gaining self-worth and self-respect mm-hmm. and like confidence in who I am. Mm-hmm. And then now that I accept me, I'm like, well, these are silly. Like these yeah. are actually entertaining at this point because mm-hmm. it's like who is this person yeah. like that's so sad that you sit behind a your phone or keyboard mm-hmm. and you're just like yeah spewing yeah and i feel like it gives people power in the case of it being on like the phone because yeah um like even the case of like a conversation in person like if i said something mean to you which i'm not going to but i would never <laughs> um but if i said something mean to you more than likely you would have some type of reaction like your body language would change probably more than likely like the tone of voice would change like different things that would change that more than likely would elicit some type of guilt within me mm-hmm. um in the case of typing on your phone like there's that protection like mm-hmm. at the end of the day i can click send and then maybe you'll see it later maybe you'll interact with it but again i don't have to pay attention to it yeah and then that gives the case that power yeah that's very true um what else is there anything that you have wanted to like spread a message to the world or to people who have maybe once felt like you have in in the past or anything um i think a big thing and i said it kind of earlier is like at the end of the day like things that have happened to you it's it's not your fault um and you also you get to be the writer of your like of your story going forward and so being able to Uh, work on yourself and also to know it's going to take time something that I tell my clients as well as myself of like things aren't going to change in a day or a week or maybe even a month Um, and therapy it doesn't have to be something that you're like constantly in there might be times where like you know what I'm doing okay like personally right now I um, sounds weird to say like I fired my therapist not in a bad (laughs) way but I'm like hey you know what it's time to terminate therapy you're trying you're gonna fly (laughs) yes like if I'm like if I need to go back then I'll go back um but in the case of like there might be moments down the road that I'm like you know what I need to go back to therapy things that come up and so um you know therapy doesn't have to be a thing that you're constantly in as well as like you know what change can happen it just it requires a lot of a lot of time a lot of effort Mm -hmm. um and really kind of sitting in like the yuckiness sometimes I tell clients I'm like you know what you're pretty much like you're sitting you're sitting in the mud of everything like and it sucks yeah definitely it sucks and I was like you know and I will sit it sit in it with you during this time and we'll work through it and eventually you know my my hope is that you come to a point of being able to feel empowered and and being able to be assertive for yourself and um you know and it's it's very like rewarding in the case of like helping my clients and um, I think especially when it comes in general but I see a lot when it comes to community health just so much trauma like so much generational trauma and I'm like you know at the end of the day you like it took a lot took a lot in the case for you coming in and like you're wanting to improve yourself you're wanting to put yourself first you're wanting to try and break this generational trauma and that is amazing and also it's really hard because at the end of the day when you go back home if you're constantly around that environment it's gonna be difficult and so like additionally a big thing for people is just like you know find a good support um and if like your family's not a good support trying to get connected to 
um, people outside of that, whether it be in the case of like different, like different hobbies you like, trying to go get connected to that because at the end of the day, I'm just trying to find people that you connect with, even if it's not in the case of like, hey, have you also gone through trauma? Because at the end of the day, <laughs> trauma dumping as much as, you know, it can be beneficial if you're with someone that you can trust. But if you just dump to everyone, it, it's going to hurt you more than help you. Yeah. Um, I like that you're talking about finding your people, your community. And mm-hmm. sometimes it takes a second. Yeah. But isolation is the worst thing mm-hmm. for someone with their mental health, or especially when they're trying to grow out of it. Yeah. When you feel isolated, all the imposter syndrome and all mm-hmm. the things start coming back in your head. Like, I'm not good enough. I yeah. can't do this. But I feel like our generation, because I think you said 93, I'm 92. Yes. So we're of the same age. Um, we're like cycle breakers. Yeah. And we're, and Gen Z is doing a great job as well. And I'm not saying anyone older than us is not doing it, but I feel like our generation really took the reins and was like, no, I'm not going to continue living my life like that or pass it on to children yeah. or continue the cycle. We're going to be cycle breakers. Yeah. And I feel like that's really cool. That's why when you reached out, I was like, oh, she'll be great to have on yeah. the podcast because you have a great story and you yeah. have um, perspective. And I think a lot of people will really appreciate that. Yeah, it, it really worked out because I was still on leave and I was like on medical leave and I was like, you know what? Just scroll on through Instagram. And I was like, at the end of the day, the way I see things, it's like, um, like taking the chance and I'm like, if you if you ask and you don't get an answer, or if they say no, then so be it. Like at the end of the day, if I don't ask, then it's already no. And right. so I'm like, for me, it's a lot about like growth. It's a lot about in the case of getting outside my comfort zone. This is very outside my comfort zone. I would have never <laughs> known because you're doing great. Oh, thank you. Um, and like just being able to, and I think a big thing also like reaching out, I'm like, you know what? I think mental health is very important. And like I've heard um, like multiple like episodes of your podcast as well as, you know, follow you on Instagram and TikTok. And so being able um, to, even though like at the end of the day, I know very little of you. Like, and I think in general, like what people see like online, it's like, you know what? You get like maybe 5% of the entire person, but the the Lindsay I saw online, I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, it seems very genuine, very caring. Thank you. And yeah, and <laughs> you very much emulate that in person. And so I'm like, you know what? Um, like wanting to to reach out. I'm like, if it works out, then it works out. And it did. Good. I'm glad. Um, I want to end this with a fun little thing yes. I like to do with, you're still healthcare related because yeah. you're a therapist, but maybe, have you ever worked in the hospital? No, um, I've gone seeing clients when they okay. were in the ER. So or, you might yeah. know some of these things. I'm going to uh-huh. show you some pictures. Okay. This is what I like to do to people who don't work in the hospital. Okay. I'm going to show you some pictures. You're going to tell me what they are. You're okay. going to tell me what you think they are and okay. what you think they're named. Okay. What are they for? Okay. And then we'll get to where um, you can tell everyone where to find you okay. because I feel like there's going to be, I get questions all the time of who is your therapist and, um, you're not my therapist, but I have a therapist and she's licensed also in California and I have to be in California to see her, which I totally understand, but you are licensed in California. So for my California listeners, correct. Okay. (laughs) I always like to say that because sometimes people are like, yeah, I called, but I'm in New York. I'm like, well, yeah, the U S is a very interesting. It goes all by states. And so unless your therapist is also licensed in the state that you live in, Mm -hmm. uh, they can't see you. Okay. So it definitely, definitely gets a little difficult. I know. I'm, I always feel bad, but sorry, I'm trying to open up the pictures <laughs> That's okay. that they'll open up. <laughs> I always feel bad because they're like, I called, but she said no. I was like, well. Yeah. That's all my In that state. case, go on like, what is it? Psychology.com. Psychology Today. Psychology Today. Yeah. And that's where you can find um, a therapist. Therapists in your area. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like something in the case with, um, COVID and everything, a lot of like telehealth really popped up. And so yeah. I think that definitely offers a lot of access to people, which is nice. It is. It is really nice. Okay. Have you ever seen this? Um, I feel like that's, if you guys are listening, you should be watching on YouTube to see the images, but I'll be describing them when she's done. I feel like that's the thing you put water in and you squirt it. Okay. In the case that, you know, especially like people who give birth and stuff, but I could be completely wrong. All right. This is another image of it attached to something. Um, I actually have one right here. So this is a Purewick. Okay. I ask everyone this because this is the nurse's mascot. Uh-huh. Okay. When this sucker came out, we were like, oh, this is going to change the game for us. This is an external catheter. Okay. And we literally place it right here Uh and hook it up to suction. And Uh you can pee in it and it goes into the canister. I was off. (laughs) You were off. Everyone's off. No one ever knows what this is. And it cracks me up because you show a nurse this. They're like, oh, pure way. Or cooter canoe. Yeah. uh, Twat dog. Peach leech. We have many names for (laughs) this. Peach (laughs) leech. So I like showing people this guy. That's okay, though. Yeah. A for effort. Do you yeah. know what this is? Um, 
It looks like a thing to do CPR. Boom! Okay. This is the Lucas machine. Oh. I know. I meant to show you the second, but I showed you it first. So this is the Lucas machine. It's a CPR machine. Literally does CPR for us. That seems more complicated to put someone in there when they need it. Honestly, this is going to cause some controversy. I don't prefer those. Yeah. Um, they're great when we're all tired, but yeah. also I feel like, and obviously like you can program it, like it does the correct um, CPR, yeah. but I feel like people sometimes do better CPR. Yeah. But that's just my humbled opinion. Yeah. Um, what do you think this is? Oh, I want to say the bag looks like for in the case, like fluids and the, the cord thing looks like maybe an IV, but I, I'm probably, I It's know. okay. You're what probably going to be wrong and you are yeah. wrong. That's okay. This is a flexi seal. This piece goes up your booty. Oh, for I know. When people right. are having liquid bowel movements Ooh. and when many reasons they might need this, but we blow that little uh, balloon up so it doesn't just fall right out. It still that's falls right out. Um, but yeah, that's for poop. Oh yeah! I like they really should change the bags. Then <laughs> you can't really see it. Like, like that's what is that? <laughs> the back of it's clear. Okay. So we can believe okay. it. We can see it. What's this? Okay, that looks like the thing that you like. You put water in. You go poop poop yep. down there. So some people call it a douche. It's but I was trying. I was going for enema. I was like, my it's, friends and enemas. This is an enema for your poop. Last it's like a bidet, but exactly. it's manual. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so what's this? Last one. It looks like something you attach to suction. But oh, okay. You're on, you're on the right cath. But I have no idea. Path. I said you're on the right cath. <laughs> this is for a catheter? <laughs> this is a condom cath. Okay. So, it kind of looks like a condom on yep, the bottom. On the bottom, you just roll it over the penis okay. and you hook it up to suction and it sucks their pee out these i hate them with a passion they rarely work but when they do they're great i was gonna say it doesn't look very sturdy <laughs> <laughs> this part rolls down and it's supposed to be okay. really sticky but it can be awkward taking those off too because yeah. they're really sticky yeah but yeah that's all i have for you <laughs> well thank you you're welcome <laughs> i'm really grateful that you even reached out and that you came all this way it was yeah. really nice to meet you where can everyone find you if you want them to find you on socials um so if someone's looking for a therapist and they are in california i am on psychology today uh probably by the time this airs out my new psychology today will be up because originally i was going through a platform that they actually control all of it and i was okay. like i really don't like that um so so i'll give you like my updated one but in the case people are are interested in therapy they can find me on site psychology today in the case of my own personal stuff i just keep that private perfect um, that's why i was like i think you have a private instagram so i'm not yes. gonna blast that <laughs> yeah so i have my private instagram um i don't post anything on tiktok literally have no videos on there that's all right i just scroll like comment well if you're in california and you're looking for a therapist you can go on psychology today and i'll have the link in the description but thank you again so yeah, much thank you you're welcome bye guys bye, bye.